You are now tuned in to Freeing the Minds TV, home to mindful living. Peace, love, and light. Peace and love. Welcome back to www.freethemice.com and another episode of The Art of Peace. The Art of Peace. In this episode today, we will be going through the making and the creation of this piece right here, which we entitled To Levi, the Son of Yasharel. To Levi, the Son of Yasharel. And Yasharel is another name of the original name of Israel. So this piece right here is ultimately going into that. And it's going into the Pacific scene of the Book of Jubilees, chapter 45, verses 15 and 16 in particular, where in this scene, you're going into ultimately Israel, also known as Jacob, dies and passes and goes and joins his fathers, you know, and his forefathers. And they bury him in the cave, a double cave off in Chevron. And um, just before he passes, just before he passes, he passes on the books, on the scriptures, the sacred scriptures, the sacred writings of the family and the lineage and since the days of Adam, on to his son, Levi. And he charges Levi to be in control of him and to guard the scriptures and to keep them up to date, keep them renewed, right? Keep them renewed, being keeping the stories of all those who come after him during his time and after him and passing them on to someone in his family you know to carry on the tradition as far as keeping the scriptures and keeping the text and keeping all the literature so um which ends up getting compiled into the grand sefer or the f sefer or the book of beginning to end it's also known as the book of the alpha and the omega the many different titles it goes by but the f sefer the f sefer so um we're going to get into the creation of it. While we're going into it, we're going to do it like fast forward. We're also going to be having some music playing at the same time. So as we go through all of that, I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy. And then we'll come back in at the end and then talk about it. I also have the verse, uh, the chapter, uh, chapter 45, which we'll be listening to at the same time as we observe the creation as well. So I hope you enjoy. You know, I don't want to take up too much of your time in this little intro, but um, I hope you enjoy what you're about to see and uh, experience. And um, I just see it fit, man. I just saw it fit. You know, I didn't anticipate it like this as far as like planning anything or anything like that. But um, the piece just, it, it inspired. It just comes out of nowhere in the process of just reading, taking the text, going beginning to end in the timeline as far as like sequence of events I've been reading. And um, reading it in the version of the SF first gives me such, it's, it's giving me a whole nother level of understanding. And it could be a combination of this version along with the age now where I'm at now and my previous life experiences here, you know what I mean? Just like, just the things that you experience through life that you go through, you know, as well as like the things that you're into as far as like your research and your studies, you know, and combining that and crossing it with history, it's just really hitting home. And then family lineage as well, it's all of it's just hitting home right on time, you know what I mean? Especially in this time right now, it's just like, beautiful budding time blossoming time from within from the spirit on the inside you know all this stuff can be happening you know what i mean but what's happening within oneself what's happening in the spirit what's happening inside the soul and the heart these are key and this is where we have to really pay most close attention and and plant you know positive seeds loving seeds careful seeds sowing the right thoughts the right intentions the right deeds and the right works so in the process of this right here you know like i said it, our creativity it comes through inspiration so as it comes through and it comes out you just let it out and let it through you know and this came through it started coming through maybe about like a week or two ago and as it's been coming through and coming through in waves and stuff like that i just I, I man, I saw what it was about like a week ago. I said I think it was about a week ago, and, and I saw what it was going into. I saw what it was coming. As soon as it started coming through, I was like, "Oh man, this is it!" Because it hit, man. I was just like, "Yo, man, lineage being passed on, books being passed on, scriptures being passed on. Like the book was always there. 
the book was always there, you know, and it's just built over time. And as you go through the timelines, you can read it, you see how things just shift and change. And as you read and study history as well in real time, you see how things shift and change and you put the two together and you get start getting a real good picture of things. So um, it just seemed fitting, you know, this being the weekend of my father's passing, uh, 79, 1979, man, July 24th. And July 24th was just this past Friday, yesterday. So um, finishing this piece up today, it just seemed fitting, man. Doing a piece on legacy, on a father who's passing, passing on the books and the scripture of the family lineage and being responsible of carrying it on. It just seemed just so fitting, man. It just seemed so fitting, you know? And it's one of those things where it's like, I didn't intend it. It just happened, you know? And when those things happen like that and you just see, you recognize the divine alignment of all this stuff, you realize you're right where you're supposed to be. You just be thankful, man. You just be thankful. So I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. I hope you're about to enjoy what we're about to get into. And um, thank you again for tuning in. I love you. I'll be back in the end to talk a little bit more.
the book of Jubilee, chapter 45. And Yasharel went into the country of Mitzrayim, into the land of Goshen, on the new moon of the fourth month, in the second year of the third week of the 45th Jubilee. And Yosef went to meet his father, Yaakov, to the land of Goshen, and he fell on his father's neck and wept. And Yasharel said unto Yosef, Now, let me die since I have seen you. And now, may Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel be blessed, the Elohim of Abraham and the Elohim of Yishak, who has not withheld his mercy and his grace from his servant Yaakov. It is enough for me that I have seen your face while I am yet alive, yea, True is the vision which I saw in Bethel. Blessed be Yahuwah Elohai forever and ever, and blessed be his name. And Yosef and his brothers ate bread before their father and drank wine. And Yaakov rejoiced with exceedingly great joy because he saw Yosef eating with his brothers and drinking before him. And he blessed the creator of all things who had preserved him and had preserved for him his twelve sons. And Yosef had given to his father and to his brothers as a gift the right of dwelling in the land of Goshen and in Ram, Mephes, Ramesses, and all the region round about, which he ruled over before Pharaoh. And Yasharel and his sons dwelt in the land of Goshen the best part of the land of Misraim, and Yasharel was 137 years old when he came into Misraim. And Yosef nourished his father and his brethren, and also their possessions with bread as much as sufficed them for the seven years of the famine. And the land of Misraim suffered by reason of the famine, and Yosef acquired all the land of Misraim for Pharaoh in return for food and he got possession of the people and their cattle and everything for Pharaoh. And the years of the famine were accomplished and Yosef gave to the people in the land seed and food that they might sow the land in the eighth year for the river had overflowed all the land of Mitzrayim for in the seven years of the famine it had not overflowed and had irrigated only a few places on the banks of the river. But now it overflowed, and the Mitzrayim sold the land, and it bore much grain that year. And this was the first year of the fourth week of the 45th Jubilee. And Joseph took up the grain of the harvest, the fifth part, for the king, and left four parts for them for food and for seed. Joseph made it an ordinance for the land of Mitzrayim until this day. And Yasharel lived in the land of Mitzrayim 17 years, and all the days which he lived were three jubilees, 147 years, and he died in the fourth year of the fifth week of the 45th jubilee. And Yasharel blessed his sons before he died and told them everything that would befall them in the land of Mitzrayim. And he made known to them what would come upon them in the last days and blessed them and gave to Yosef two portions in the land. And he slept with his father and he was buried in the double cave in the land of Canaan near Abraham, his father, in the grave which he dug for himself in the double cave in the land of Chevron. And he gave all his seferim and the seferim of his fathers, all the books, all his books and all the books of his fathers to Levi, his son, that he might guard them and renew them for his children until this day. Amen. The family book scriptures.
records passed down to Levi to keep the records up to date the happenings the lineage until this day thus the Sefer Amen Indeed, indeed. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, so that was the creation of it all. That was the creation of it all, you know, and um, happens in waves, happens in stages, happens as it goes through, you know, and the process of it all. I wasn't able to catch some of the friends that came through on videotape and stuff. Maybe next time, you know, plus in the flow, you just lose track of time and stuff like that, you know, but um, yeah, man, life happens in the process of creating. Life happens in the process of creating. So what do we got here? What do we got here? We got Levi. We got Levi. We have the cave, the double cave, where Yasharel, Israel, also known as Jacob, is buried, you know, with his forefathers. He's buried in a grave in which he dug himself, you know. And um, Jacob is coming out, or Israel is coming out, to join his fathers, his forefathers, you know. And um, forefathers, the angels in heaven in the skies meeting them in the skies meeting them in the heavenly sphere meeting them in the heavenly realm in the heavenly realm we see like the mountains we see the sun we see the sky which is very like as above so below the reflection as above so below so we see the clouds and we see the sky and we see the birds and we see the sun and we see the mountains as a reflection of what we have going here on earth you know and um we have Levi holding the sefer, wearing the breastplate with the gemstones in there, all the various different crystals, along with their coinciding names next to them, as far as the 12 tribes of Israel. And um, he's wearing his head wrapped. Levi has his head wrapped. He's growing his beard all nice and long. Uh, you know, a children of Israel. Yasharelli. And the tribe of Levi, the house of Levi, they were ultimately like the house of priests. Though the whole tribe, the, all of them were supposed to be ultimately a holy nation. All of them were to be a holy nation and a nation of priests and priestesses. And the house of Levi was to keep the scriptures, to keep the books, keep the traditions, hold like that, the tabernacles and the ceremonies and the festivals and all that. They were to be the key family, the key factor as far as like the central point on, you know, people coming together, judging as well. The judges would come out of here. So they were like central to the family, central to the family structure, central to the maintaining of the family and the legacy, central to the carrying on and the passing on of tradition. The central figures out of the house of Levi, we have Moses and Aaron, and Moses ushering in the commandments. Out of the tribe of Judah, we have Yahusha Hamashiach, known as the Messiah, the Christ. And, um, you know, it's just a serious story, a serious moment, a serious period, a serious time. The father passes on, letting them all know their fate, what is to happen, what direction is things to go. And who was to be in charge of what? Who was to be in control of what? As well as what would be happening to everybody. The family being split up. So the children have to figure out a way to bond together. At the same time, carry on through time. Because they're going to be populating. They're going to go into various different areas and populate. How are we going to maintain without our central figure, without old bird here? You know? In old bird, this happens a lot of times in families when grandmothers pass or central figures in families pass that just seem to be the rock that holds the family together. The rock that holds the family together. 
And when these people pass, these important figures in our family, these important figures in our lives, when they transition on to the next realm, it's like their spirit is still with us. And we don't want to be selfish and keep it here and always and, and think and feel down, you know, because they're no longer here with us. We want to be thankful for the lessons which they provided and let us and, and carry on positively and strongly and let them know that they taught us the right way gave us the right seeds and the right jewels and we got to do justice out here and carry it on strongly positively righteously giving a good name and honor to our family name to our family traditions to our family ways familiar ways and in areas where it's not righteous we bring righteousness to it in the areas where it's dark we bring light to it we be we become that light we live that light we be that truth we elevate that truth we resurrect that truth by the awareness of it and by the living of it, we resurrect it and we become this truth, we become this light. We, this is what we call breaking cycles, breaking family cycles or breaking our own mental cycles. But we break these cycles this way, by right? Just thinking better and doing better, aspiring to be better, aspiring to be greater, aspiring just to be better, man. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that everything right with that so let that be encouragement to continue on striving for perfection let that be encouragement to continue to strive on to just to be positive add on light add just be the best that you can be do the best that you can do and don't feel bad on yourself and don't feel down on yourself when we don't reach the vision that we have for ourselves because we should always be aspiring to be that uh, just like, like that carrot, you know what I mean? A little bit further, a little bit faster in the dog races, you know? Just keeping that a higher ideal that we aspire to. Always a higher ideal that we aspire to. And that's what we just go into, man. That helps us to elevate, that helps us to raise up. So this is ultimately a piece to paying homage to that lineage and legacy and just keeping on tradition. Encouragement to just keep on tradition, man. Keep on doing right, just keep on doing, just carrying on family legacy and bringing honor to your family's legacy. Bringing honor to the family's legacy. And if the family's legacy wasn't honorable, we change that by the things in which we do now. You know, we change our future by what we do in the present. We automatically shift it. And just our continuously and consistency or continual, continual consistency helps to push that and usher that in that direction quicker faster with more momentum mm, powerful things man life is a wonderful thing man life is a wonderful thing so yeah this is just a little piece that touches on that builds on that got the mountain and it's all lush and beautiful land a plush area but check out the chapter Check out that whole chapter. Check out the whole book of Jubilee. There's a lot of powerful stuff in there. But check out that chapter. It's a good chapter. Really good chapter. And you're going to hear it. You already heard it, actually. So, But definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. Read it for yourself in your own good time. But either way it goes, man, thank you for your time here. Thank you for tuning on in. I thank you. Wish you nothing but love and light, positivity, prosperity, and abundance be with you. And uh, it's another episode. Just another episode, Art of Peace. Thank you again for tuning in. Peace and love. Peace. Visit www.freeingtheminds.com for your unique, original Freeing the Minds merchandise and apparel.